Alexander Arnold speaking there about the idea of pressure and that the pressure isn't really uh, penetrating this Liverpool squad at the moment at all. Do you buy that, particularly looking at their first half performance last night? Well, it's a great question when you ask players that. And I've not heard one saying, oh yeah, we're really struggling with the pressure now. <laughs> Obviously, you can't answer the question in that way. So, um, yeah, look, every player will feel it to some level. Uh, I can remember Alec Ferguson being the one in the old days used to say, after you know the Christmas New Year period, that's when the league chase really begins. That's when you find out who the real winners are. And then you'll find out, because the pressure is on every single week on a, in both of those teams, and by the way, Spurs as well. Um, so the, th the big giveaway for that interview for me was one little line, which Trent said right in the middle of that. He said, we came here to do a job, which is usually football speak for. We tried to get a draw, mm. <laughs> you know, maybe play a little bit in the break. And because they set up that way, you th with a very strong three-man midfield, you know, there was no Shakiri there, obviously. But also, they didn't. They made sure that their fullbacks really didn't go forward much in that first half. And it's so unusual to see Robertson so defensive as he was in the first half. However, when they lost the goals, they changed that. They played a little bit more open. They created those chances. Robertson actually created the goal when he was allowed to go free. So Liverpool playing the way Liverpool play would probably have won that game had they started that way from the start, I think. But there was very little in it. Yeah, that's the thing, Pat, because it's like, obviously Mane's chance you're talking about inches here, um, but I'm just wondering psychologically, did Klopp set the team up um, with inculcating kind of a sense of inferiority in them rather than like, we, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys, we're the team in better form at the moment. And I, I don't really know the answer, I could, I could see it either way, but you know, if you're looking at this in a few months' time and Liverpool haven't won the league, everyone will say, well, they should have gone a bit more toe-to-toe -to -toe and played a more enterprising midfield maybe. There's a thin line between being scared of the opposition and giving them respect. Mm. <laughs> I don't know where we are in that line, I, I think that's the point you're making. And to be honest, if you go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to them and they, they manage to tear you to shreds and you lose with three goals, you'll be called naive. So, you know, and as you say, there was only inches in it. So it was one of those ones, they, they tried it. It's worked well for Liverpool before. We've watched Liverpool, particularly in European away games, playing that way, you know, dragging teams onto them, playing brilliantly on the break. So it can work for them. Look, this is the toughest game of the season uh, domestically for Liverpool away from home at Manchester City. You know, if they could have got a point out of it, it would have been absolutely brilliant for them. But they got so incredibly close. So without taking anything away from them, yeah, I'd like to have seen them more open. That That's purely selfish because I want to see a more open game for the first 45 minutes as well as the second 45 minutes. But they put Man City under pressure. And as you say, it was inches. You're talking about the possibility of the, the post, the ball off the line or just about off the line. Um, the possible sending off for company as well, that's inches as well. There was very, very little in that entire game. Um, but maybe, you know, I looked at some of the stats last night as well, and it was 49 to 51% possession. So mm. there was nothing in it. It was just two teams, and whoever got a little bit lucky. You look at Sani's ball, his goal he scored, it hits off the post and goes in. Yeah. That's the difference. Their, theirs hits off, of, Liverpool's hits off the post and comes back out. So little in it. Like the thing is, we could easily fall into the trap here, Pat, of scoreboard journalism. And if the score, if the score line was completely flipped and Liverpool had one two one, we might be sitting here having the conversation right. about how Pep took the backward step in his team and and how he set up in a more defensive approach than usual. And that might have been the losing of the game had City actually lost the game. And it's interesting just reading a couple of the articles this morning. Paul Hayward in the Telegraph says that Guardiola versus Klopp is a struggle between purists, but not between dreamers. And I think that it really showed up the level of practicality that does exist in both men last night. It certainly did. You know, we're talking about Klopp being you know, slightly more defensive for the two fullbacks, but you're right. I mean, if you look at Danilo instead of uh, you know, Walker in that right-hand side, that's a more defensive outlook. And obviously they put Laporte at, at left fullback. Now that actually turned out to be a really good move, that because he kept Salah quiet for, for the vast majority of the game. And he's a better defender than Zinchenko if Zinchenko had been available, obviously with Mendy not being there. So yeah, there, there, there was a pragmatism there. The pragmatism that you mentioned that made me laugh was near the end of the game. And it was always coming to those City defenders and they were just lumping it anywhere. When's the last time you saw City doing that? It's and great to see, Pat, isn't it? Because like, it's all, it's, uh, it's, it'd be boring if we're watching this amazing football every week. You just want to see like old-fashioned defenders who may be from anywhere in the world saying, I don't care, we need to win this game, get the bloody thing out of there. 
Yeah, Rose edited it. I have to say, quite a lot of us smiled, didn't we, when we saw that a few times in the you know company near the end, but also just about anybody in the Manchester City team near the end. They were under a bit of pressure. I understand that it's Liverpool had sent Van Dijk up the park, and you think, well, don't worry about it. Just lump it anywhere. There was nobody up the field. Aguero, I don't know if you watched Aguero near the end, he couldn't move. Yeah. He tried to chase him one occasion and then just stopped. He, it's not that he was being lazy. There was no left for him as well. So that was old school. And as the back of me looks at, across at Pep and Klopp, and I love what they're doing. It's, it's a much better style of football than we've probably seen in, you know, in, in English football before. But they also have taken on board the things you need to take on board about English football that not, the scrap is needed. It absolutely is needed. And no, there was no playing out from the back in those last five minutes from City. Yeah, I think the, the best line I saw about that was Barney Ronay saying that it felt like a bare knuckle punch up at a conference of senior particle physicists, uh, which is a good <laughs> way of putting it. That we have this notion that, you know, these are two extremely poetic sides, but it showed really the importance of that grit, which is sometimes missing or perceived to be missing, which I think is the crucial point here. I, I don't think last night was suddenly the first time Manchester City said, we're going to tear into the opposition. I mean, you have a player cam on Fernandinho any time he plays, and uh, he's a very hard man to say the very least, I think, Pat. Yeah, and of course we know Fernandinho's an incredibly important player. Since he's come back, they've they've got the mojo back to some degree. Manchester City, that's a big thing. But, but I think that was something special last night. It wasn't just him. We watched, you know, the two silvers, particularly Bernardo, battering into tackles. I mean, honestly, really, right from the start of the game. So it was impressive to see them understanding that's what was needed. You needed to win that fight to allow yourself the time and the space to play football. So I, I was, I think most of us were quite impressed with that. More to the fact that Manchester City, we've watched them a lot. And even when those games, I was down at the game at Stamford Bridge, you know, when they needed to have that fight when they went behind against Chelsea, it wasn't there. It absolutely, what really wasn't there. You thought they haven't got a plan B. Well, they've developed a wee plan B there in, in that game. And that's going to stand them in fairly good stead because it's not going to be a walk in the park all the way to the end of the season for either team, Manchester City or Liverpool. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if City get you know, likes of De Bruyne back, if Silva gets his full fitness and he's, you know, best he's play back, that they could win every game between now and the end of the I'm season. I'm with Pat on that, Jay. I think, I think that it's it's very feasible they'll win every game. What have they got? 17, 18 games left. It's, 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 most of them will be a cakewalk. And those big games, De Bruyne coming back in and just the players itching to get off the bench. Now, Silva poor game last night he's not going to be doing that anymore that 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 will be the challenge on liverpool that it's it's hard to see city with their mojo back dropping points after last night and i i it would not amaze me at all if they won every game and no, and exactly and i think liverpool will think that way and, and they will believe that in themselves but no we're not saying it's a stick on to happen there's one or two tough ones they've got united and the city united one might be an interesting one itself because sometimes all the tactics go out the window in that one as well um, but I don't think Liverpool can take any chances at all. They have to make sure that they don't slip up, that Manchester City could go on that grind and run. You know, they get a num there's a number of us. I mean, Mandy has been a massive, massive loss there in that left back area. When they've lost games and lost goals, it's generally come from that left hand side of their defence. And if they had him, it wouldn't be such a difficulty. Having said that, everybody loses players. They've lost him, it's had a little effect. I think Liverpool have just worried about one player. Um, they have to get one player they have to concern themselves about and keeping him fit. If they lose Van Dijk, City will win the league. So mm. keep him fit. <laughs> keep him absolutely fit. Yeah, for sure. Like, Do you think from now on Jurgen Klopp has kind of decided that he's going to ditch the idea of a 4-3-3? That I can kind of see why he went for it from the start, I guess. The more hard-nosed approach, kind of assuming, I think you said it earlier on, Johnny, that Kevin De Bruyne was going to start the match. Do you think from here on out, Liverpool play a 4-2-3-1 when everybody's fit and that's it? I don't think he should change everything for. I mean, he's changed it. He's adapted a few times anyway already this season. But there's no point in worrying about the other teams. They're not going to give you the same, ask you the same questions as Manchester City will ask you. But that four, then a hard three in the middle. I'm not sure it will stick to that too often. Certainly not at home. I mean, they'll just overwhelm teams at home as they always do. But it, I mean, I've looked at again where the kind of position of the players were last night. Most of the time, uh, you know, you looked at the players that were playing, and the player that was playing closest to a number 10 was Milner. You know, and I love Milner, and we all love Milner for what he's done. But there's better number 10s there at mm. Liverpool than Milner. So they have to make sure that, you know, 
having to go and win games, there are a few games that go out and hope for a draw or accept a draw between now and the end of the season. So, you know, horses for courses at home, they will just charge at teams and make sure that they get those three points early on. Away from home, they might have to be a little bit more cute, but then cute didn't work at the Etihad, did it? Uh, one thing I think we need to give credit to because we've seen so much of him doing unbelievable things down through the years is Sergio Aguero's performance and we speak about this possibility of Liverpool perhaps getting a little bit overwhelmed by the position that they're in. If there's one man who never gets phased by anything really who manages to show up when it really matters is Sergio Aguero. His performance kind of turning something out of nothing really with his goal last night. The way you mentioned as well late in the game he could barely even run at the end. I think you know we, we saw David Silva sort of have one of his poorest games particularly this season in the Manchester City shirt, you've got to give credit consistently to the old guard and Sergio Aguero does it time and time again when it matters for this Manchester City team. Yeah, the amount of teams that would just love to have him on the team. I mean, you look at the likes of City, Liverpool, Chelsea to a degree as well, that's exactly the type of centre forward they need because he's intelligent, he moves really, really well, he actually holds the ball up pretty well, he got fouled early on. There was a booking thrown out, and that was him. He knew that he couldn't really be hit after that. And he, he held the ball up, and he laid it off well. He, he falls into a number 10 position quite a lot of the time as well, which confuses the life out of centre-back sometimes. He was also clever enough to spend his time playing on Lovren and not Van Dijk. Have a look at the goal. Look at who he runs past. It's Lovren, and it's not Van Dijk. So he's got great intelligence. And, of course, on top of all that, what a striker. You know, what a finisher. Um, and there was no space at all to get that ball in that near pass, post there. And he lashed it in there. And he understands also the players. One of the, the great things about Manchester City, you know, all the times I've watched them, but particularly this season, the amount of times they get to the byline. It's supposed to be the hardest thing to do to get to the byline, to get across from that area. I mean, I spent my career trying to do that. And teams hate doing that, they get, letting you get there because it's one of the hardest balls, if not the hardest ball to defend into the box from a cutback. And he knows when these players like Bo Silva, Zorsani get to that position, even Mares, that he knows exactly the right place to go. And his finishing from those, those areas are fantastic. His movement just before that goal was just utterly world class because there was no space. There was no chance on there. Lovren had a yard on him. He got that yard and he got another yard and he still got a terrible angle. And he still scores. So, yeah, in short, he's, he is absolutely brilliant. But maybe on top of that, did he really used to run as much as he did last night? <laughs> I think maybe he put in as much effort last night as I've ever seen him in any game. You can imagine Chelsea looking at Morata, past all club the other night, and the, the mental struggle he has in front of goal. If they had an Aguero, they'd be they'd every chance to be well up there. Well, like, they, that, that is the thing, really. Like That has been one of the, the other theories uh, about Manchester City and their slump throughout Christmas was that there was no number nine really giving the full impact of the team with Aguero perhaps not fully on it at a certain point and his kind of, I don't want to call it a slump in form, Pat, because there was other factors there at play, but perhaps a resurgent Sergio Aguero is just as important as a fully fit Fernandinho to the efforts of this Manchester City team in terms of not falling flat once again. I, I don't think there is a team sport out there where the phrase, you can become a better player by not playing, it <laughs> doesn't apply. Mm. And sometimes, you know, you really know how good a player is or how important a player is to your team when he's not either A, fully fit, or B, fit at all and not there. Um, and when Gabriel Jesus is playing and uh, Aguero is not, you know, he, he can score, he's, he's fine, he's OK, but he's not Aguero. I mean, he's nowhere near Aguero for all the things he adds to your team. And you start looking around and thinking to yourself, how do they replace him? Because they're eventually going to have to replace him. He's in his 30s now. You know, the, the, there's a lot of miles in that clock as well. Uh, and he's, you know, sometimes it helps a lot, but the smaller players seem to last a bit longer sometimes because the stockiness, but it's all about the injuries usually. Well, he's had a lot of injuries over the years. So, you know, you, you've got to make sure that you don't use him every single game. And maybe that's City's biggest problem between now and the end of the season. They've got Champions League. They've got, you know, probably FA Cup. They've got this as well, they've got the League Cup stuff that they've done all the way through this season, they've got a lot of games, they can't rely on him in every single game between now and the end of the season, so they're going to have to be clever with him, um, because on form he's unstoppable, particularly if you've got the quality of the, the Silvas and De Bruyne all and Mares, <laughs> you could keep on going there, Sterling, you know maybe the only other possibility is Sterling up front, um, now and again for the odd game, uh, just to use his pace He's not the most intelligent runner a lot of the time, 
when he's playing central, but he's got enough pace and he's a he's a good scorer at the moment. If you give him two or three chances, he'll score one of them, and they generally get two or three chances in most games. Speaking of the Manchester City old guard, should Vincent Company been sent off last night? Um, I think, uh, well, yes, um, is the, the short answer, uh, but it's a tough one for the referee to see. Uh, he saw it once, he thought it was a lunge at the ball, if he'd have seen it from the angles, uh, you know, everybody else saw it for him, uh, and particularly afterwards, and the fact that it was two-footed, it was about the lunge, uh, didn't get the ball, everything. I think if you've got a VAR um, from next season, and that you show that, I think he's off. I don't think you stay on the pitch from that. Um, I think I'm not probably not the only person to say this either. Had it not been Vincent Company, had it been one or two other people, they'd have gone off. Um, Vincent's got, because he's so likeable, he's so liked, um, because he's so respected, because, you know, the history in the game, all that sort of stuff, you know, he probably gets that tiny little bit more leeway than some others. Um, definitely some others with a, not the same reputation, they would have walked for that. Yeah. Which is sad, because it shouldn't yeah. be like that, but, you know, in fairness, um, you can have an effect on... on via your reputation and just your general character and I thought he stood for everything that City were, were about last night and that, as Pat was alluding to that, lashing the ball anywhere at the end, just that indomitable spirit of the old centre-back, um, but he should have seen red, mm. unfortunately. And Liverpool win the game then. Who's going to win the league, Pat? <laughs> like you know, like I know, like anybody knows. Not, um, my, uh, to be fair, I, I, I think Liverpool have got the slightest of edges just now. But it comes down to who keeps fit, you know. And Liverpool can afford to lose just about anyone, as I say, except Van Dijk. They can't lose him. If they lose him, then Manchester City win the league. I don't think there's even a question of that. They're not good enough defensively without him. Um, whereas, you know, Manchester City, they, yes, they can win every game between now and the end of the season. And it might not be enough. And, of course, don't ignore Tottenham. If both of those teams get the jitters at all, Tottenham are quite capable. The thing we haven't taken on board, of course, is Champions League. Who keeps on going all the way in the Champions League and how much stress and pressure put, that puts on them in the games that come after the Champions League weeks, that'll make a big difference. And that's a, a real unknowable at the moment. So you could end up in what would be the perfect situation, one of them wins the Champions League and one of them wins the league. That would be fair. And wouldn't that be great for English football? Well, Liverpool, I, I've said this, if Liverpool won the Champions League and didn't win the league, their fans would be disappointed this season. Like, I, I genuinely think the Champions League is such a secondary in, interest for them now. If Man City won the Champions League, they'd happily not win the league, I think. And that's, it's, it, City are pretty strong favourites to the Champions League, but it's mad. If Spurs hadn't blown that, you know, they, they were one up against Wolves and seemingly coast and lose the game, it's like such a small gap. Mm. Um, they, they, it, there have been so many twists and turns the last sort of, month or so it's just been so compelling and something that was on the verge of like kind of just bleeding away into nothingness it's true we are on the verge of a, of a classic here yeah and that's that's why when you ask any questions i'm, I'm not i'm not going to talk nonsense to you and say this a will win the league or b will win the league it's, it's nonsense nobody knows it's it's so tight they're so well matched um there are so many other factors to come into play which will be nothing got to do with ability. It will just be got to do with luck. You know, you, the luck of the injuries, the luck of, you know, players having fitness problems, how far you go in another cup. You know, does someone get injured when they're playing an international? All those sorts of things. Because you look at the two technical coaches, there's nothing between them. And you add Pochettino, there's nothing between that lot. They're all top quality. They're all a joy. They're all a great addition to English football. They've made it probably the best Premier League in terms of quality that certainly I've seen. Um, I can't think of any. I'm thinking of, yeah, sometimes you've had one or two great teams who have, you know, cruised away and won the league. That's different from a really great Premier League at the top level. And it's especially with the technical players that you've got there. So, yeah, absolutely brilliant between now and the end of the season. I can't wait for it. I'll be slightly honest. I had no preference and I have no preference. between. Come on, Liverpool. Pat. Who do you want to win us? Come on. No. Come on. There's no preference, but I will tell you one thing. I was happy Man City won last night. Really happy. Keep it alive. I want, yeah, I won, I won the excitement. I won the entertainment. So it's not anti Liverpool. And even though I play for Everton, even though I play for Chelsea, it's nothing got to do with that. Because I love players like Salah. You know, I love players like, you know, Van Dijk. This fabulous, probably the best defender in the world at the moment. You know, it's, it kind of goes beyond when you've, you've played football for a long time. You just want to see right good players. Um, and that's what both of those teams have got. Actually, all, I keep on saying this, all three, don't ignore Spurs. Just really don't ignore them. 
there is a possibility that they could go a long way. They could go out early, earlier in the Champions League and give themselves that bit of a rest, and that would make one hell of a change.